Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 62 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in this tutorial, let's look at grouping data using pandas. Again, in the last few tutorials, we looked at uh, the basics of pandas, including sorting that we covered in the last tutorial. Now grouping, as the name suggests, it's just groups based on a parameter that you provide, based on a condition that you provide. Now, a quick example could be, for example, if you're looking at uh, uh, the number of COVID cases in the United States. Okay, now usually they are listed as, okay, you have uh, alphabetically, like you have, uh, for example, Alabama on March 1st, you have so many cases, Alabama on uh, March 2nd, you have so many cases, and you have like all the way up to, I don't know, July 15th or something, and then uh, the next one comes a different state and then California on March 1st and so on. Now, if you want to look at, okay, I just want to look at California, then you just extract California uh, like the way I showed you in the last tutorial. Just, you know, your country equals to California, show me everything, right? But what group by is you can basically say, hey, uh, the states, go ahead and group them. That means uh, it's going to group all Alabama into one, all California into one, and so on. But what do you do when you group by? You can actually, while you're grouping, you can count the values, you can sum the values. If, for example, the data set that you have reports uh, the total number of cases that day, yeah, on March 1st, March 2nd, March 3rd, March, March 4th, and so on, but you want the total uh, cumulative, then you can just go ahead and dot sum, yeah, uh, or dot mean to get a mean value, okay, uh, what is the mean value, you know, for a given period of time. Uh, let's jump into Spider to get a better understanding of exactly what grouping is and how that can be very useful. So uh, again, for that, uh, we're going to use our Spider IDE. Let me go ahead and zoom in. And we are going to import the same data set that we have been importing in the last couple of tutorials. So let's go ahead and run these two lines. Again, the data set has seven columns, 100 rows, and uh, uh, the first column labeled unnamed zero, which should be appropriately actually labeled as a set uh, number, for example. This is set one, set two, set three, set four, and we have like image numbers or image names, image one, two, three, four, and then how many nuclei are counted under manual by person one, person two, manual two, who gave up after the first three images, and then the three automated ways, okay? So this is what this uh, data set represents. Okay, now, first of all, uh, this these kind of type of things, I don't know about you, but it bugs, uh, it bugs me, like not having an appropriate column name, I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. So let's change that to begin with, okay? Again, now we are getting into the proper way of doing things, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, select this and run this line. So it's uh, changing the title from unnamed zero to image set. Again, I talked about this in a couple of tutorials ago. And if you want to change column names for multiple columns, go ahead and put a comma next to it and then keep adding them because this is nothing but a dictionary. Okay, now uh, also the other thing that bothers me is my manual two column has only three entries and remaining entries are all not a numbers or blanks. So let's go ahead and drop it. If it's at least 80% full, then I would have considered dropping only the rows, but uh, because most of this column is useless, let's go ahead and drop it. Again, df.drop manual two, axis equals to one represents your uh, column and that's gone. So we should only have uh, uh, this one renamed, first of all, as image set, and then uh, the manual two is gone. Slowly, we're cleaning up the data set. Okay, now let's start looking at group by. Okay, again, uh, let me open this uh, so it's a bit visual. You see, under image set, we have set one, 25 images, set two, 25 images, set three, and set four. If you want to study uh, the, uh, these as sets, the set can be, okay, you're doing an experiment and you have 25 images that are representing your, uh, let's say, uh, initial part of the experiment. The next 25 after five hours and the next 25 after 10 hours, uh, you know, you collect more samples and you image them. So you have them as different sets in one data set and you are trying to sort them as these different sets, okay? So that's the uh, uh, thought experiment right now. So one way of doing this, I'll show you my favorite way of doing this grouping, but uh, one way is you just create a group object, okay? A group Python object. You'll see what I mean in a second. So when you do uh, group by, the way you do that is take your data frame, 
yeah our data frame is df and then dot group by that's it okay and then uh, i don't think you even need to provide by you, you can just do df but uh, uh, let's actually do that and then image set okay so it's actually grouping by image set column so if i if you look up here the group by file it's a generic data frame group by type and if i open you may not see much of anything that makes sense and don't get intimidated by this uh, once you create because it's showing that because it's an object okay once you have that group by file object now you can actually go ahead and apply dot count or dot mean or you know uh, dot sum or anything so let's go ahead and apply dot count and assign that to set data count okay and uh, now if you just look at uh, set data count the data set looks somewhat like this this uh, can be a bit confusing so let me delete all of that and show you my preferred way my preferred way is i assign things to directly to a data frame in this example i'm going to create a new data frame called group by file count okay so i'm grouping it by file and i'm counting all the values okay which is probably not ideal for this example but i'll show you what it does so all i'm doing is df.groupby which is our data frame dot group by and our data frame with column name image set group by our data frame column name image set you can group by multiple columns okay if you have uh, for example if you have uh, uh, total countries and then us is one of the countries and you have states so then you can group by country and states then it has the group by uh, you know and then you can extract individual values i'll let you uh, experiment with that part but uh, for now let's just do this and when we run this we should have a group by file count group by file count if i open this they all should be 25 again since we're counting it's just counting how many entries we have for each set we have 25 right images and under manual we have 24 for the top three sets and set 422 why because in each of these top three sets one image was missing and in the last one apparently th uh, uh, three images are missing and automated it did a good job analyzing all the images so this right away gives me an idea of where the issues could potentially be now uh, while you're grouping again this dot represents what you want to do with the values when you're grouping yeah here we counted them here let's look at the mean which probably makes more sense for this example group by mean and uh, the manual way in set one the mean value is 100.667 so we on average are finding about 100 nuclei in set one 98 or uh, 99 nuclei in set two 100 100 okay in each of these sets by automated way we are doing 72 75 78 and so on again this gives a very nice idea of exactly uh, uh, you know what's going on with that set and let's also do some some it's it's a humongous number because we are actually adding all the values within set one so we have 25 images and in each image we have on average about 100 uh, nuclei so it's about 2500 here okay so this is how you do group by and again i i don't think there is a, a lot more for us to dwell on here again now you have to get your hands dirty by working on your own data sets knowing that you know how to handle how to clean up how to sort how to group by and uh, a couple more points before we end this tutorial about correlation between data in this case i'm not sure if we'll find any correlation but then uh, maybe there will be between auto and uh, manual but if you want to look at the correlation if you want to generate a correlation uh, it's almost like a confusion matrix where it provides you these values let's go ahead and print it our data frame dot correlation and you can see down here it's let me move it up it's actually printing this correlation meaning uh, between manual and manual my correlation is one right i mean they're obviously linearly correlated and they're equal one between manual and auto using threshold 2 the correlation is 0 0.738 that's 73.8% of correlation between these two and so on uh, sometimes you may see a negative value because that indicates a negative correlation when uh, excuse me when manual goes up then uh, uh, then some other value will go down okay uh, so that's that's basically uh, or you can say okay as time goes by 
your interest in counting this goes by, so your accuracy goes down or something. So when there is an inverse relationship, your correlation obviously would be negative. So that's what df.cor actually does. And if, uh, in fact, uh, most of the time, you probably would like to correlate one column with another column that you know. Then, uh, by the way, when you do df.cor, if you have some columns with, uh, if you have some columns with uh, uh, non-values uh, or non-integer or non-floating, uh, like text, for example, it's going to drop that completely. It's not going to, it's going to ignore that. Okay, so uh, let's just to do one column versus the other, all you do is just select what column versus what column, right? Yeah, so df manual dot c o r r df auto. So this is going to print 0.7 something that we saw earlier, 0.73812. Okay, so this I think uh, uh, covers uh, our group by. Again, there is a lot more uh, you can we can discuss and I'm pretty sure you'll get bored watching this video. Uh, now, please get your hands dirty by trying this out on your own data sets. And again, wait for the next tutorial to uh, gain a bit more knowledge about uh, uh, pandas. And uh, until then, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.